to eat our indigenous foods. Um, because if you've noticed, you've probably heard around health that like, okay, like traditional African-American soul food isn't that healthy it, and yada, yada, yada. But I'm here to say that actually it is. So I am cooking from our traditional recipe. So we have the sweet potatoes, we have the black eyed peas. I'm gonna show you macaroni and cheese from a um, less healthy perspective, but one that's super delicious um, because moderation. And I'm gonna talk about why I've included things and excluded them. So in this case, we are looking at blood sugar. And a lot of times in our recipes, who's seen candy hands with marshmallows on top? Raise your hand if you have. Lots and lots of sugar. Um, so in this recipe, I'm going to be using some natural sugars, including coconut, um, which change the glycemic index of this dish. So, in, so sweet potatoes are naturally sweet. We know that, um, but when we add sugar to them, they give us sort of a precursor to diabetes um, glycemic lift. What we wanna do throughout our diets is keep that, that level of sugar as steady as possible. And so in my cookbook, I don't use any white sugar. We use, um, we use maple syrup or coconut sugar, things like that, that are a much lower glycemic index. Now white sugar is gonna be the highest, corn syrup out there as well. And some people have been fooled by agave. So, um, be aware, agave came around as sort of a healthy sugar, but is actually just as processed as corn syrup. So I talk a little bit about that in the book. So now you see I have the yams here. We're gonna add, we're gonna cook these. And while they're cooking, I'll show you the rest of what we're, we've got on the agenda, but we're gonna cook these with, you see this nice, that, this is coconut oil. Raise your hand if, if you cook with coconut oil. I can see you, I have the gallery view. Okay, tell me, you can come off mute and tell me what sort of oils you prefer to cook with if you don't use coconut. I can, anybody wanna volunteer what their favorite oil is? Mine's are coconut, avocado, and olive. Mine is canola. Canola oil. Okay, so anyone else love canola? I started, using, I started using canola as well because I heard it was healthy for diabetic people and I have type 2 diabetes. Okay, and what was the reason behind why it's healthy for I diabetics? Was, I was just listening. Less sugars, but I was just listening to other folks. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go ahead and say... Um, Canola is not my favorite. It's a pretty highly processed oil. Um, so because I put a bunch of oil on these when I cook them, I need the, the pan to have some sides. Mm -hmm. so add this over here. So that our oil doesn't drip all over the oven. That okay. makes sense. All, does that make sense? See what I have here, the oil. Now coconut oil is solid. A lot of people believe that coconut oil is not healthy. Can you see that? See how thick it is? Mm. Okay. Now that was disproved. Um, and it, we found out that when they were testing coconut oil, they were actually refrying it, which creates a hydrogenated oil. Let me come back to where you can see. Now a hydrogenated oil is one that's super processed. Um, and it's going to be stuck in your arteries. So that's why we, we heard coconut oil wasn't good. In nutrition school, many, many, many generations of nutritionists learned it was bad. Well, in probably, can't remember the year, but by the time I went to nutrition training in 2012, it had been disproven. So coconut oil refined or unrefined is considered a healthy oil now. And for diabetics, Coconut oil has um, been used to help with blood sugar. Some people even use coconut oil instead of coffee, like taking a, a straight tablespoon of it in the morning because it gives such a huge energetic boost. Um, 
Any questions about that? Um, I really want this to be interactive. So as I'm cooking and showing you some things, we're talking about why I'm using the different items as opposed to maybe ones that um, you used before. Like canola oil is a great example. In my cookbook, my food stamps cookbook, I actually discourage the use of canola oil. Now, oils are also a huge um, area in nutrition um, conversations because you've got raw oils versus cooked oils, high quality oils, rancid oils. Most oils um, come in like a, cheaper oils come in like a clear bottle. And you see this one is very dark. So you want your oils to be in a dark glass bottle because when they're in clear bottles, They've been sitting on the shelves. They've been exposed to sunlight. It's changing the nature of that oil. Makes sense. Okay. Um, so my, like, again, my top three, coconut, whether refined or unrefined, when it's unrefined, so it's raw, it tastes just like coconut. And that's what I put on the yams because I'm making coconut yams. When it's refined, we have a refined one here, has no flavor. So that's something you would want to use for frying plantains, if you fry plantains, or um, if you didn't want your yams to taste like coconut, you just wanted to cook them in a nice oil. The next one here, this is avocado oil. This is my helper right here. She's six. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> this is Issa. And, um, and then olive oil. Olive oil, there is, um, there's differences. There's extra virgin olive oil. Raise your hand if you're part of that versus regular olive oil. So extra virgin olive oil, you don't wanna cook with it. It's a more delicate oil. It's nice for salads. Again, you wanna find it in a dark glass bottle. Um, and then uh, regular olive oil that doesn't say EV or extra virgin, you can use that for cooking. It'll withhold to higher temperatures without changing its nature, okay? So while we're, there's a couple things we're going in, um, I know we're perfectly on time. Uh, so I cooked some things in advance. Uh, so while um, we're cooking the yams, we're gonna take a look over here at our macaroni. So here I have, um, now I'm a, I'm a wick chopper, I'm an EBT chopper. These were on sale. These were only a dollar, that's why I love mac and cheese. Um, when we go through the, the wick route, you can actually get tons of these products for free, I'm a mom, so uh, you know I've, I've been through the, the WIC experience a couple of times, and I know that you can get a super nice cheese, even this brand, Tillamook, which is um, a very fancy brand, is, is WIC eligible. So these are the, the items that I'm gonna be showing you when I put this together, um, and then, my favorite little hack from super creamy mac and cheese is Velveeta. Now this is not super healthy. So it, <laughs> it's delicious, but it's moderation, okay? Because this is, um, it has a lot of canola oil, which, you know, I just told you is not the best for you, but we all know that eating is a practice of harm reduction. So we're gonna have some indulgent mac and cheese with all the good stuff that we grew up on. In the meantime, we're also supplementing that with some beautiful collard greens that we're gonna cook in a nice um, healthy way, as well as our black eyed peas and yams, tons of fiber, um, and all of that chlorophyll from those dark, dark greens. Any questions there? I'm gonna drain this macaroni. So- um, I did actually know. have a question. No, I just wanted to be sure that you said I could just take a, a teaspoon of the olive oil in the morning and it'll like replace the energy instead of coffee. So it's a tablespoon of coconut oil unrefined coconut oil, the one that smells and tastes like a coconut. Unrefined. You can try that throughout your day when you need an energy boost. You could also put it in your coffee to start there and then sort of kind of decrease the amount of coffee. You've heard of those bulletproof, is it called bulletproof coffee? Those um, coffees with that, where they put butter in it and all kinds of things. So kind of the same concept, but um, if you want to decrease your, you know, dependence on coffee. So 
I am draining these in our sink, which you can't see, hopefully. <laughs> Okay, so the pasta is drained. I'm going to put it back in where we cooked it. And I'm going to start adding my special ingredients that really make it pop. So if you, um, if you use wick, or you have wick, or um, you can use the straight whole milk or the non-fat milk. Um, my um, personal preference is to use cream. So if you can get cream in your budget, and this is just a half pint. Okay, so I'm gonna put the cream on. The noodles are still hot. So I'm putting the cream on there so the cream warms up. All right, who's had a mac and cheese cook-off before? <laughs> okay, so I've done plenty of nice mac and cheese cook-offs, especially vegan ones. Um, this is not that. This is your, your mama's mac and cheese. So I showed you in advance, you have your, your wick block of cheese. People use, I mean, call this government cheese, but it's really actually a nice cheese that they give you, give us access to, they give mamas access to. So I'm using extra sharp and sharp, if you can get that. I shredded it already to make it melt easily. And we're gonna put it right in there. This was two packs. And then um, since, again, the pasta is hot, it's all gonna melt. We have some special guests coming in. I just wanna say your assistant is giving us Vanna White vibes. <laughs> I love it. Um, I was like, girl, you need to be off the set until I call you and look at what I got. <laughs> all on the set. Okay, um, so this is melting down. You can turn it on to a low temperature. Um, I'm gonna add another pack. When you're making this recipe, all these recipes that I'm presenting to you today are no fail. They're gonna taste good no matter what you do. So if you get, if you happen to get like, oops, this was more ounces than Rachel said on the recipe. That's fine. Just have a little extra cheese on hand just to get it to the you know thickness that you want it to be. So I added in a little extra pack of um, sharp cheddar that was already grated. Okay. All right, so that's all melting down. I'm gonna turn the heat on. Get that low. All right, and the last part of it. Hey, assistant, would you do me a favor? Yeah. When you're cooking with kids, there's so many things they can do. Um, not everybody likes to let their kids use a knife. Um, so for example, this is a type of cheese she doesn't have to cut. It's just in the wrapper. Can you take all of these out? Yes. And just put them on the cutting board? Yes. There you go. You can unwrap them. So I personally chose one. Which, uh, this is EBT eligible. Um, I personally chose one that's going to give her a little more um, engagement so that she stays busy okay any questions about what i've done so far with this amazing mac and cheese all right yeah so now it's getting all nice and gooey so while that's getting gooey and you've got your child helper engaged let's walk over to my favorite part of this demo i'll come back around 
We're going to be bringing, can you hear me? It's uh, my pressure cooker is releasing right now. Hands up if you cook with a pressure cooker. Okay, hands up if you cook your beans in a slow cooker. Anyone do the slow cooker? Anyone do just beans in the pot? Okay. All perfectly great ways to cook beans. Full disclosure, we're new to having a pressure cooker, okay? We've been on quite a modest household budget. Um, but I have to say the pressure cooker really did revolutionize the amount of time we spend in the kitchen prepping. If you, um, and it also really cooks the beans down and breaks them down and makes them really digestible. So if anybody's ever had like too much gas or indigestion, I highly recommend using the pressure cooker for your beans or, and, or in addition, putting a little bit of um, apple cider vinegar into them after they're done cooking. Um, other ways to do beans that are super helpful is to soak them overnight in warm water or cold water um, or to boil them, turn off the water, let them sit, and then cook them when you're ready to. So they're already a little softer. So today, I was sure to do the pressure cooker because we're limited on time. You don't want to sit here watching beans boil. Um, so they're already cooked and ready to be seasoned. All right, so let me show you what that looks like. Great work, Eva. Right, here come our beans. This was the black eyed peas in the pressure cooker. These are wick eligible beans. They come in 16 ounces. Anyone here just a wick expert and know every all the, the product sizes that are eligible <laughs> besides me? <laughs> Who works with mamas all the time? You know exactly what's going to be eligible. We've got Even our. You know what's eligible every day when you go to the grocery store. They're adding and taking things off, so it changes literally every day. I know it's so get one frustrating. One brand of lactate, and then when I went the next day, I wasn't able to get the lactate. The same brand, same store, just you no. Know, is that is that Lashonda? Yeah. Yeah, I feel you because I get the At Target. Yeah, we, we cannot stand target with them not allowing the things that we know are absolutely WIC eligible. Um, like we were getting soy milk. Um, you know that you can get tofu and soy if you want to switch to a vegetarian diet. Um, WIC does allow tofu and soy. And so we found a soy that was like 100% soybeans, organic soybeans and water, nothing else. And we realized that we could add probiotics to it and make yogurt. It's so, so easy. So we got a ton of soy yogurt, but then um, when they switched to the WIC card, suddenly we could not get that brand. We could only get Silk or um, another one that's shelf stable that has a lot of added ingredients and it won't make yogurt. So, but in general, you know that you can get your dozen eggs, large eggs, and your 16 ounces cheese and your 16 ounce beans. So our beans are over here ready. Um, they're cooked. Look at my assistant has unwrapped all this beautiful Velveeta, our little indulgence of the day. So what we're gonna show you now, I'm gonna have you Put all of those in the pot. Hold on, yep. just a couple more. For our black eyed peas, we're gonna put some fried garlic in there because we're not using any um, we're not using any meat source in these. So these are completely vegan, super clean. 
um, black eyed peas. And we know we want that flavor. It's called umami when you when you bite into something and it's just incredible. That's called umami and it's an experience on the tongue that is replicated with uh, something called MSG, which is not the healthiest thing out there. Like you've seen restaurants or like, pot. no, yes, put it right in the pot. No MSG. Woo -woo. So um, in order to sort of get that, that flavor that is really full and fulfilling and salty called umami, we have to do some tricks here. So one of my tricks here is to make some fried garlic and to use soy sauce as my salt because soy sauce naturally, fermented soy, which is how you make soy sauce, naturally creates, uh, is natural umami. Called liquid smoke. Announcing on here. Is it good? Just press X. Oh, my distance learner is telling me how to use Zoom because she knows. <laughs> Anyone else have a child in, enrolled in distance learning and knows more about Zoom than you now? <laughs> okay, so let me show you. This is my garlic. I just chop, chop, chop. And we're gonna put it, I'm gonna use a little avocado oil. My hand. Okay, I put about a tablespoon. Gonna heat that pan up. Meanwhile, I'm mixing in this cheese. Oh my gosh, can you see how creamy this is? Oh. <laughs> Look at that. Woo! Okay. That's why they call it mac and cheese. That's why they call it mac and cheese, baby. <laughs> Right. Our oil is getting hot over here. Just another example of healthy cooking. I'm using cast iron. Cast iron is my absolute favorite type of cooking. I don't like nonstick because of the carcinogens, the cancer related chemicals that are in nonstick. While we're at this, I'm smashing some more garlic now because the very last thing we're gonna make is our collard greens and they also call for garlic. Yay! We love garlic. And collard greens, the way we're gonna cook them today, cook really fast. We're not doing the stewed version, we're doing a nice little saute. So let me prep that garlic. I can save steps in my cooking by knowing sort of the order and sequence of what I'm making and how long it takes. That's why when we started, I popped the yams in because those need to cook for at least 20 minutes. Um, and while they're cooking, we prepare all these other wonderful dishes. Okay. So let's do our first, our fried garlic. Beautiful into the oil, nice and hot. Clean while you cook. Put that in the trash, you gotta use your sous chefs. <laughs> All right, our, our garlic is sizzling. While that's happening, let me show you. I'm gonna show you a nice little cutting technique for your collard greens, okay? Um, yeah, she picked these from our garden today. We are so blessed to be growing these. That's okay, thank you. 
Okay, so these have been washed and prepped. When you get your greens, you wanna stack them all up. Make sure you can see me. Okay. Now, when you have the nice big leaves, you can roll them up into a bundle. Ours are pretty small. So just imagine with me, I have them rolled into a bundle, right? And then I'm gonna chop skinny, tiny cuts here. Okay. Okay, um, so that's an example. Now, once you unroll these, you have these nice long ribbons of collard green, and that's called a chiffonade. It's a very fancy term, but you probably do it all the time. I'm just going to discard our stems, even though because they're, these are garden grown, they're not very thick at all, but I'm not gonna use those. I'm just trying to use my um, leaves here. And just to be ready, I did make some in advance so that we can keep us moving on schedule. Okay. All right. So now I have my, my bits of fried garlic that I want to use for my black-eyed peas. And those black-eyed peas have been over here, remember, in the cracker cooker. So all I have to do to season these beans is to add my nice garlic. I got my garlic in there. And I'm going to add those other ingredients that I mentioned that mock that experience that we're used to. So here's liquid smoke. Let's see if my camera gets it. There we go. That's liquid smoke. I said a teaspoon for you. You can, you can do what you like. You can add more if you want it more meaty. Nutrition on yeast is also a seasoning that gives you umami flavor. And we put a healthy amount in here. It's about a quarter cup. And then we also have our soy base. So, so this, is, this is Bragg's liquid amino acids, but soy sauce is just about the same thing. So get whatever you can afford. Get that in there for all my salt. Ooh, mommy. Ooh, mommy. It's umami. I can taste it. Yeah, so the kitchen smells amazing right now. It smells like we cooked this with a ham hock because of that liquid mesquite smoke. Okay. Um, you can always do salt and pepper to taste. We're gonna taste this. I'm gonna give a little taste to my helper. There you go. <laughs> and let's see. Oh yeah, that's that's me. Yeah, that's okay. So what I do then, because this is a pressure cooker, so let me show you what happens once we've seasoned it. So you see, there's a little more. A little more saucy and stew like. Um, I actually basically grab that so you can see it better. Okay, so this is vegan, nothing, no animal products, um, completely super powerful cream. Make sure my set is still right up. Okay, 
So I'm gonna put this one back on the pressure cooker to let it simmer. If you're not using a pressure cooker, then you would just, you would cook it a little bit longer with whatever method you're using. All right. Any questions there about what I did with the um, with the black eyed peas? To season them to taste the way we are accustomed to. Okay, cool. So all this has been happening within how many minutes? Like thirty or less. Um, so we're coming up on around forty five minutes of actual cook time, and we've got a whole entire feast already. So there's that mac and cheese now with the Velveeta and that needs to go in the oven. But before we do that, I'm gonna add again, WIC eligible or EBT eligible eggs, harm reduction, right? Eggs are um, not necessarily unhealthy. But if you are going to have them regularly, I highly recommend getting pasture raised eggs, which can be expensive, but also go on sale. I've seen them for $1.99. I've seen them for $8.99. So these are WIC. These are regular ones. Now, the only difference in these is that the hens were fed differently. And we do know that that matters because of their diet. It's going to give us a better or worse quality um, egg. So if the, if the hens were eating like cornmeal versus grass, you're going to get a different quality in um, what you consume in their eggs. So I'm putting two eggs in there in my mac and cheese. In the past, I have also put a stick of butter. Um, <laughs> that will be really, really nice. Um, but I had to kind of draw the line here <laughs> with... Um, just how indulgent it's gonna be. Okay, so now my eggs in there. Um, can you get me a paper towel, sweetheart? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so you can use spray oil or the more budget option is going to be to just take your oil, whether it was in the pan or in the cup that you were measuring, and you put on a towel, rub it on your casserole dish so that you don't stick. I said it's really that it makes it easier to serve your mac and cheese. And then we are going to... So you get a nice picture. Whee! Here it comes. There. It, oh, oh. Yeah, nice and creamy. <laughs> it's juicy. It's dripping oil. It smells amazing. It's sharp cheddar with Velveeta. Looks like we have enough for two. Another small dish. All right. Look at that. Okay, now, some folks like to have a nice little crust on it. So this would be the time that you add breadcrumbs. But I'm thinking it just looks so perfect like this. I'm gonna put it in the oven just like this. Okay. Ooh. And when I look in the oven, I got a great surprise Ooh. showing me that my yams are done earlier than I thought they would be. Perfect. Wow. I'm going to pull those out. They look delicious. Oh, yeah. Look at those yams. And they smell delicious. Focus. There they are. All right. Now I'm switching places in there. Mac and cheese going in. Ta da! Okay, yams are here. Woo, this is exciting. 
We're going to blend those yams in this Vitamix blender. This is a professional culinary um, blender and food processor. It's not necessary to have one. This recipe will work fine in any blender or even if you mash it up by hand. So, excuse me, yeast, I need to remove, mm -hmm. offset and move that, thank you. Mm -hmm. So here we go. All right. I'm just carefully putting these in. I already checked to make sure they were cooked all the way through by sticking them with a fork. And they smell so coconutty. And there's lots of oil all over. That's a good sign because this is a healthy oil. Okay, and as I kind of get them, I used a parchment paper here. Hi, hi. Someone's excited like I am. So I use the parchment paper. You can see I'm gonna lift it and just get them all in there. So this was six small yams. If you find like bigger ones, you can use two or three, it, um, you know, whatever fits. And then, I don't think that's my music. This is the coconut milk. Nice and thick. Also with lots of fat, this is good fat. Good fat for smart kids, lubricating joints. Skin being supple, you know, we're not afraid of this kind of fat. And I'm going to add just a touch more sweetener with coconut sugar. This is from Trader Joe's. We can also get it at Grocery Outlet. Folks ask me a lot about the price of these things. I only get things that are available on discount. I don't know if you have grocery outlet in Nevada and California. We do. And it is like every organic chef's dream because everything there is super on sale. I just have to check and make sure it's not bad. <laughs> okay, so here we go. This is what we're going to blend. You can see yams that were roasted in coconut oil with a pinch. Pinch of salt brings out the flavor coconut milk on there. I've kept some of my coconut milk so that I can add more if it needs it. All right. Okay, here's my blender. This is going to be loud. Here we go. Taste? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I just like candy. You want to take some? Here. <laughs> okay. Oh. Okay, so this is our, our remix of the traditional jam dish. Let me show you how it looks when we serve it. It's beautiful. <laughs> Whoops. 
some folks um, recommend for the sort of aesthetics of this is to peel the skin first, which is perfectly fine. I chose to keep the skin because it has so much um, so much nutrient in it. But this is our our remix yams. Focus. There we go. Piping hot, nice and smooth. I'm about to put everything out here. I know we're just at our time right now, but if you allow me about five more minutes, I can show you what we have got together as our meal. Now here goes, this was just the extra mac and cheese because our mac and cheese is gonna take a while in the oven, but I'm gonna give you the amount I reserved for our finished holiday meal yeah. photo. <laughs> Okay, so that's how much with the amount that I showed you, you can get usually two casserole dishes, maybe a bigger one and a smaller one. Okay. Um, where are our black eyed peas? Here. I'm going to use a slotted spoon with my black eyed peas on the screen because I pressure cook them. They're in a lot of extra liquid. Okay, here they come. These are some smoky. Yummy. They're finished now. There they are. Look at that. Raise your hand if you had your New Year's black eyed peas. Okay. I have a couple pieces of fried garlic I'm just going to put on top. And you go pick me some cilantro. Yeah. Okay. We've been growing, this is so easy to do. Yes, cilantro in the classroom, classroom. We've been growing our herbs, which is super easy to do. Very, very affordable. And it gives your kids some steam experience, the science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. Um, so she's now going to pick cilantro that we have in a simple little flower pot by the window. Um, and we are going to give you our garnished version of the black eyed peas. So now I'm gonna give you our collard greens. Pot's already nice and hot. I'm gonna get put some garlic in there. These are our sauteed greens instead of stewed greens. I also in the cookbook have a recipe for stewed greens because I love stewed greens. I grew up with the turkey neck bone in there and I'll never get tired of my stewed greens. But again, with the stewed greens, instead of the animal product, I use the liquid smoke. This is my main cheat to make things really taste the way I want them to, the way I grew up, um, but that doesn't have uh, animal product. If you're going for like a super clean eating. Um, and it's cheaper, you know, I wrote my food stamps cookbook. I didn't put any meat or dairy in there just because of the price of it. And because it also makes your, um, studies show that there's been an increase in the frequency that we meet, eat, that we meet, that we meet, eat, that we eat meat in the American diet. So just to, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to become a vegetarian to be healthy, but we, the study that I'm referring to shows that the increase of meat over time has, has correlated with an increase in chronic health conditions, such as heart disease, diabetes, mm. um, 
And so what we want to do is continue to eat the foods we love because as, as I've mentioned, indigenous food, food that is African, food that is Black, food that is African-American, food that is Southern, isn't necessarily unhealthy, but there are tweaks that we can do. It's actually quite healthy. Black-eyed peas, yams, super healthy for us. Good dairy um, is also, uh, people eat that all the time for health reasons. Um, so my daughter just brought me uh, this cilantro. When you have a kiddo, you can just ask them to pick the cilantro and make it pretty. Put it on top of Ooh, the black egg piece. I love uh, styling. She's a food stylist. I'm an everything stylist. Okay, move our vitamins out of here. Over here, we've got the, the next round of garlic going. Okay. Here we have, this is kale that's been shipping on. Um, in the method that I showed you, where we place the leaves together and cut them nice and thin. But because I love collards and these came straight from the garden today, I'm gonna give you this demo with the collard greens in the sauteed garlic. See that over there? Coming together nicely. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. Mm. Okay. Some quick things you can do as this is cooking. My recipe is really simple. It's super simple. It's about salt and pepper. Um, but because we've been out here with all these wonderful products, I'm gonna add the soy sauce just to give it a kick. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So it really cooks that fast. It really cooks that fast. I'm turning the fire off now. So this is very different from the stew style. It just goes so quickly and Take a look at that. Oh, yeah, that smells yummy. There we are. I love the good Okay, so because I cooked in cast iron, again, even though I took it off the flame, it's going to continue cooking in this pan for a bit. And now you can see the display that we have. I'm going to give you a nice little view of it. So here we go. We've got your yam, your black eyed peas over there with a little smoke. We have our mac and cheese, which is Rick style, and we have these still sizzling collard greens cooked in super healthy oil. Um, they're sauteed very quickly so they maintain their nutrients. Oh, okay. And I'm going to step back and ask for your final question. Let me get my set back. Sunday dinner on a Saturday. Yes. And did you see how fast it is to put it together? Um, and also involve your children at the same time. In the oven right now, I'll tell you, it looks like the mac and cheese is almost ready, uh, but because we're on a time budget, uh, I may be able to show you, um, I'll just keep, I'll stay on and log in while you are uh, continuing your, your talk today. All right, so <laughs> there it is, holiday cooking 
on a budget. My food stamps cookbook recipes are in here. The only recipes that aren't in my food stamps cookbook are the powerful black eyed peas, which I sent you a copy of. Those are in my forthcoming book on um, maternal health foods. So this is a great one for um, pregnant and postpartum. And then my mac, my um, my wick style mac and cheese is not in my book because it's not really in alignment with my harm reduction values, but it is delicious. Um, and when you enjoy life with these wonderful um, indigenous nutrient based foods, you should be able to enjoy some indulgence as well. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Second book coming up for maternal health and postpartum? Yes, I do have a book coming soon. <laughs> you can't pre-order it yet. What kind of recipes would be in that book? So okra, lots of um, these, these coconut yams, again, because it's got wonderful, wonderful fats and fibers. Um, some different kinds of Caribbean and African recipes that are traditional for postpartum. So like pepper soup, fish pepper soup, if you're seeing Nigerians, all night, like postpartum is the fish pepper soup. Um, Egusi with melon seeds. We've got Sancocho, which is Dominican. Lots of plantains for healthy fats and carbs. Uh, some of them, there's gonna be a lot of crossover. So when you have this book, you, you actually have the the foundation for most of the healthy meals that I talk about, that I teach about. Um, but the ones specifically postpartum, a lot of okra, um, a lot of, uh, like I said, yams, plantains, um, different seeds. Oh, yeah, the mac and cheese. And Rachel, yeah. um, we have a yeah. quick question, um, just because sure. I'm not sure of all the places that we can um, get your book from. You yes. Wanna share? Sure, you can get the book on Amazon. And probably within two weeks, we'll have our own online shop. So I can send all that info to um, LaShonda. So you can buy directly. Right now, if you do buy from Amazon, it still supports um, our endeavor. Um, but we will be opening. It's so exciting, but my daughter just started some a clothing line. So she's got baby clothes that she's selling and we're selling African style uh, baby wraps. So we are gonna have all of that together in one shop. I'm selling tie-dye. She makes tie-dye, it's dope. That sounds so <laughs> awesome, Isa. Um, yeah. I have a yeah. question real quick. What's the title of the cookbook? Cause I'm trying to put the link in the comments for folks. And I also sure. just shared your Instagram. So if you go to babymamarachel.com, you can click right there. It says buy my book. Or if you go on Amazon, it would be, um, you would just, you would type in my food stamps cookbook and it should come up. All right. Well, I hope you ladies um, were just as much informed about some of these things as I was. I learned some new things today, even though I thought that I was top cook. Ah, uh, you are. There's one more thing. <laughs> oh, Isa has one more thing. What? All right. Uh, it's a, it's my carrots. Your what? My carrots. Oh, okay. We'll send them that recipe too. We're not going to show it today. Okay. We do have another cool recipe called carrot noodles, which is also in the book. It's called carrot ribbons in the book. Um, and that's a great thing for children to be able to do on their own. I wish she could have her own cook show and get my daughters on there. That's coming. I, I, okay. Look, they're about, they look the same age. And <laughs> Let me show you. Asia, come on the set. We have a, we have a videographer right here who's been behind the scenes putting together um, a recap of what we did. This is Mama Asia. Hi, everyone. So we're all baby mamas up here cooking. This is baby Onyx. And Asia's been putting all of this into our YouTube. Bear with us. It took us a couple months to work out our sets and all that. But all of this will be available. And we're going to, you'll see lots more of kids cooking um, and knowing all this information as well baby steps we are so proud of you guys and we thank you again for coming on and sharing all of this nutritional and healthy
food and cooking with us. And hopefully we'll be able to get you ladies back on more cooking calls for healthy you know, budget. budget. It's, it's my pleasure. Seriously, make it work, Nevada. We love y'all. I love your mission. Was just on your website the other day. It's beautiful. Um, and if there's anything yeah. we can do to support, please keep us in mind. Ashe. Ashe. Amen. Thank you, lady. Amen. <laughs> all right. I'm going to go on mute. All right. So again, ladies, thank you all for joining. Does anybody have any questions or comments? Um, this um, cooking demo was intended um, for some of the people in the community that mentioned that they had needs um, on creating healthier things. And even if they weren't healthy, um, just being able to create more meals on a smaller budget, being that the kids are at home more often now. And so um, hopefully we'll be able to have these at least once a month. Um, I'll work on putting that together so that we can share more healthy eating with you guys. And we also encourage you guys to follow us on all of our social media platforms. Sorry, sir. And be sure to tune in to MIMS. It's back. Quentin will be glad to have you guys all there. And again, thank you ladies for joining us. I'm just curious to see what was everyone's takeaway from this. Uh, Rachel did such a great job. Um, I know I got some tips. What are some th tips that you all learned? And I also want to do a plug for Vegas Roots, our local community garden. They have fresh eggs and they accept um, EBT and SNAP as well. And that's good to know. So please also our community garden, get healthy foods there. Yep, VegasRoots.org. Thank you, Tamika. But what was something you all took away from this? Um, this is Leslie. Um, for me, one of the biggest things was just like um, being able to make the foods that I grew up on and that I love, like greens and black eyed peas, but in a way that is going to be um, healthy and sustaining for me and my son. So, and then also like, um, I really like that saute greens because it's like way easier because like I'm used to like greens literally being on the stove all day long um it's like all day thing you're waiting on the greens so being able to um cook and cook kind of like the things that I'm used to but in new ways um that is also healthy for my family was awesome so thank you so much Um, I think I really learned about um, keeping the skin on the potatoes to make candy yams or even I'm thinking if I wanted to make sweet potato pie like I could keep the skin on with all the additional nutrients. Um, never thought to do that. So that was a little tip that stood out for me. I raise my hand. I just have to say the alternatives, alternatives, alternatives. Like that is my biggest thing of how to make things healthier. And I don't, I'm not a natural cook. I didn't really learn how to cook. So I don't know how to substitute certain things. Like I don't know what would make things taste better without messing up food. And I can't afford to be wasting money. <laughs> so here in the alternatives, like that for me, is the biggest thing like look, using that liquid smoke I'm on it like I, I want that meat flavor I, I don't eat meat but um that liquid smoke I know will definitely change my meals mm -hmm. and another thing that was really dope for me was um how to save time I need that pressure cooker or whatever I feel bad I'm, I'm a new baby mama I, I'm fostering four children and I don't know how to make the cook time go fast. So next thing you know, I'm ripping over an open a package when I know I grew up on home cooked meals. So I don't know how to do that. And I want to do that. So seeing her whip together this meal of things that I grew up eating in a short time frame, I need to know how to cut that time in half. They got uh, bedtime at eight. We got to be up early in the morning. How do I make that? happen for them. So this was a really good, really good class. Thank you for sharing. Sean, I saw your hand up too. Yes, thank you so much. This is so great. Thank you all so much. I love this. Um, uh, something I kind of 
suspected before. I'm very limited in my cooking ability, but I was glad to see it confirmed by actual chef. Is when in doubt, just use garlic. Like garlic can make anything great. I'll definitely throw in garlic and everything. I already love it. But but thank y'all so much. It's so great. Miss Sonia. You're still on mute, Miss Sonia. I'm mute. <laughs> Well, see, that's something else I'm learning with this class, how to do some of this Zoom good stuff. But um, I, I didn't know about putting apple cider vinegar in your beans. So, and I've been cooking beans for a while, so that's something new, and I'm going to try that. Did you get it? Yes, we did. Thank you for sharing. Yes, that's a new tip. Okay. Too. I'm a new cook too, so I got a lot of new stuff. Anybody else would like to share? Mika, if you if you're around, can you speak really quick about the additional SNAP benefits that people should know about? Well, oh, okay. So maybe she's just in the in the comments. But if you haven't checked the chat, um, our ambassador Tamika said for those on SNAP, please ensure you're getting your full issuance. There's been a glitch in the system. And also there's supposed to be an additional 15%, I think, or some boost that they're giving more. So if you get SNAP benefits, make sure you check. And if you aren't getting that extra bump, you know, look into it because you know, um, food costs a lot of money. <laughs> and so I just want everybody to get what they um, are entitled to, to receive. So really quick, can I just ask you folks by a show of hands who would be interested in continuing these cooking demos? Oh, I would. Cindy, did you see everybody who was interested? Okay. I uh, no, I did not. I can see it now. <laughs> it my frame was scrolled. It wouldn't let me switch to see who I had their hands up. Yeah, that's okay. We'll do a poll on our Facebook page and our Instagram. And yeah, let us know what you guys think. Um, we can do some version of this again. Okay. Now that we've worked out all the glitches. <laughs> Well, thank you ladies again for joining. Uh, Cindy, Brenda, is there anything that I'm forgetting? No, I really appreciate. Thank you, Shonda, for uh, leading this event. Shonda really, you know, put her whole effort in this. So thank you so much for this space because I know I took something new. Um, hopefully you all did. Like she said, just follow us on social media. Our website is live. Our, you will see all our flyers, all our events on our website or our social media. So. I'll put it in the chat, but that's it for us. Thank you ladies for sharing your afternoon with us. Goodbye. Goodbye, thank you.